House of the Dragon is the new Game of Thrones prequel show. It's set 200 years before Game of Thrones, and it's about the Targaryen family, Daenerys Targaryen's ancestors, back when they ruled Westeros at the height of their power. This is a story of ambition and politics, betrayal and revenge, dragons, and a lot of really angry blonde people. The show is based on a book called Fire and Blood by George Martin. George co-created this show with Ryan Condal, and they say it's a faithful adaptation of the book. George has a nickname for House of the Dragon, he calls it Hot D. There are a bunch of new trailers and interviews out for Hot D, so what do they reveal, and what can we expect from the new show? This video has no spoilers, just introduces the characters and world. So, quick history. The Targaryens are the royal dynasty of Westeros. But originally, the Targaryens came from Valyria, the old empire of the dragon lords in the east. Valyria was destroyed in the mysterious doom of Valyria, and the Targaryens were the only dragon riders to survive, because the Targaryens had already left Valyria and settled on Dragonstone, an island off Westeros. Aegon Targaryen, with his sister wives and their dragons, conquered the Seven Kingdoms, forged the Iron Throne, and became the first king of Westeros. After him was King Aenys, then King Maegor, then King Jaehaerys, and in House of the Dragon, the king is Viserys Targaryen. The basic story in Hot D is that King Viserys wants his daughter, Princess Rhaenyra, to take the throne and rule after him. But some people have other plans for the throne, including the king's brother Daemon, and the king's hand Otto, and Otto's daughter Alicent. But this conflict builds up slowly, with tensions rising over years and years. So Hot D occasionally jumps forward in time several years, to show how the politics and relationships gradually change. Alicent and Rhaenyra are played by different actors as they age, it's like in The Crown. Co-creator Ryan Condal said this is a generational war, and the time span lets us fully understand these characters and their history before the first sword stroke falls. So, Viserys Targaryen is king, and he inherited a peaceful and prosperous realm from Jaehaerys. So Viserys' reign became the apex of Targaryen power and wealth. That's reflected in the size of the Iron Throne in Hot D. It's bigger and grander compared to how it looks in Game of Thrones. The new design is also closer to how the throne is described in the books, as a huge monstrosity of metal, forged from the swords of King Aegon's enemies. In Game of Thrones, dragons are almost extinct, but in Hot D, the Targaryens have lots of dragons, and that's how they dominate Westeros. Dragons are weapons of mass destruction, they're like the nuclear bombs of this world. And since only the Targaryens have dragons, no one can mess with them. When Viserys was younger, he rode the dragon Balerion, the biggest and baddest Targaryen dragon. But Balerion soon died of old age, and Viserys hasn't ridden a dragon since. In a trailer, he calls dragons a power man should never have trifled with, like they're too dangerous to be controlled. Because King Viserys is a man of peace, he just wants everyone to get along and have a good time. So he hosts feasts and balls and tournaments, he's popular with lords and common folk. Viserys is a good man. But being a good man doesn't make you a good king, and times of peace can sow the seeds of war. In a trailer, Viserys describes a dream of his heir and the throne and of dragons. In the books, many Targaryens have prophetic dragon dreams that can tell the future, but often these dreams are misinterpreted and lead to the dreamer's downfall. Aemon Targaryen says that his brothers once dreamed of dragons, and those dreams killed them, every one. Dragon dreams can be a metaphor for ambition and the dangers of ambition. Viserys' actor Paddy Considine says that Viserys has an ego and he wants a legacy. There is a dragon in him. So Viserys is a complicated guy. Author George Martin said he's impressed with Considine's performance, giving Viserys a tragic majesty that he never had in the books. One of the biggest problems for Viserys is his brother, Prince Daemon Targaryen. 
Daemon is like the opposite of Viserys, because while Viserys is peaceful, Daemon is violent and impulsive. Actor Matt Smith said Daemon is there to cause chaos and piss people off. Daemon rides the red dragon Caraxes, called the Bloodworm, and Daemon's personality is reflected in his dragon's personality. Caraxes is like a huge rabid dog, volatile and chaotic. There are at least 17 dragons in this story, and the showrunners say we'll meet nine of them in season one. Each dragon has a distinct personality, colour and look. Some of them are bearded, like tropical lizards. Caraxes is apparently a deformed dragon with a super long neck and extra wings on his hind legs. These unique designs contrast with the dragons in Game of Thrones, which were almost impossible to tell apart, despite their colourful descriptions in the books. Prince Daemon is a great warrior. He wields the legendary Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister, once used by Queen Visenya and used by King Maegor the Cruel. In the trailers, we see Daemon leading the City Watch of King's Landing, called the Gold Cloaks. We saw the Gold Cloaks in Game of Thrones betraying Ned in season one and buying crab aphrodisiacs in season seven. Because Daemon is commander of the City Watch, and he's the one who first gave the Watch their gold cloaks and better armour, so Daemon is why they're now called Gold Cloaks. Daemon gets real enthusiastic about law enforcement, especially the part where you cut body parts off criminals. As commander of the Watch, he's known as the Prince of the City, or Lord Fleabottom. Daemon has an estranged wife called Rhea Royce, who he hates and calls his bronze bitch. Daemon considers himself heir to the throne after Viserys, but Viserys doesn't want him on the throne because he's such a loose cannon. Daemon does sometimes seem like just a violent villainous dickhead, but there are layers to him and sensitivity. Deep down, despite their differences, Daemon and Viserys love each other, and what Daemon really wants is approval and recognition from his brother. The books say that Daemon is a hero and a villain, a rogue prince made of both light and darkness. Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen is Viserys's beloved only child, and he wants her to inherit his throne. He keeps her by his side at council so she can learn politics. Rhaenyra is precocious, beautiful, and popular at court. Singers call her the realm's delight. Rhaenyra has been a dragon rider since age seven, bonded with the yellow dragon Cyrax. We can see that Targaryens now use saddles to ride their dragons, which looks a lot more comfortable than Daenerys did, clinging to Drogon's scaly back in Game of Thrones. In Hot D, the dragons are kept at this building called the Dragon Pit, and there's tradition around dragon eggs. Baby Targaryens often have dragon eggs put in their cribs so that they bond with the dragons that hatch from them. The Targaryens have close relationships with their dragons, possibly too close, historically. But Rhaenyra has that old school Targaryen fiery personality. Her actor Emma Darcy says Rhaenyra has to learn when to dampen that fire and when to trust it. Rhaenyra has similarities to Daenerys. You can also compare Rhaenyra to Arya with her rebellious and cheeky spirit and her conflict against society's gender roles. In the patriarchal world of Westeros, many lords don't want a woman on the throne. There's never been a female ruler of Westeros, and the rules of succession prefer men to women. So Rhaenyra feels a constant battle with what it means to be a woman, and how her gender clashes with her political power, which is a similar theme to Cersei's story. Rhaenyra's best friend is Alicent Hightower, the daughter of the Hand of the King, Otto Hightower. While Rhaenyra is rebellious, Alicent tends to follow the rules and do what's expected of a noble lady, kind of like Sansa Stark. In Hot D, Alicent and Rhaenyra grow up together at court, and they're super close, like siblings, which is a change from the books. In the books, Alicent is older than Rhaenyra, and we don't know much about her childhood. The book, Fire and Blood, gives only a broad summary of these events, so it's up to the show, Hot D, 
to create much of the detail of these relationships and personalities. Alicent came to court with her father, Otto Hightower. As Hand of the King, Otto is the second most powerful person in Westeros, like how Ned Stark and Tywin Lannister were Hand of the King in Game of Thrones. Otto's family, the Hightowers, are one of the oldest and richest houses in Westeros. They rule the city of Old Town, home of the Maesters of the Citadel, and of the High Septon of the Faith of the Seven. The Hightowers tend to avoid war and gain power through trade and politics. In Hot D, the Lord of Old Town is Hobart Hightower. He rules the city while his brother Otto is at court as Hand of the King. Otto is a smart, strategic politician, a pragmatist and a manipulator. He's proud, ambitious, and ruthless, but he also struggles with his decisions. Otto loves his daughter Alicent, but they don't communicate well, and their relationship is complicated by politics. Otto hates Prince Daemon and wants to prevent him having power, so Otto and Daemon are always competing for influence over King Viserys. As well as the Hightowers, another important family is House Valerion, led by Lord Corlys, the Sea Snake. Like the Targaryens, the Valerions originally came from Valyria in the east, but unlike the Targaryens, the Valerions aren't dragon riders. Instead, they love sailing and have a powerful fleet of ships. They're based on Driftmark, an island near Dragonstone and King's Landing, and they've long been close allies of the Targaryens, ruling the seas, while the Targaryens on their dragons rule the skies. Lord Corlys Velaryon is a famous adventurer and explorer. He's sailed to far distant places like Carth, Yi Ti, and Ashai. By trading with these exotic places, Corlys has made the Velaryons the richest family in Westeros, even richer than the Lannisters and Hightowers. Corlys has seen the world and made a fortune, but he's still not satisfied. Corlys has great ambitions for his family. In Hot D, Corlys and his family are black, which is a change from the books. In the books, the Valarions look much like the Targaryens, because the two families have been marrying each other for generations. The Targaryens like to keep their Valyrian dragon blood in the family, so when they don't marry a Valarion, they usually marry their sister. So the Targaryens and Valarions in the books are one big incestuous family of inbred blondes, while in Hot D they've changed the look. But the Valarions still have silver hair, indicating the Valyrian blood that they share with the Targaryens. After Corlys's voyages across the world, he got married to Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Rhaenys is a cousin of Viserys and Daemon. Rhaenys's mother was a Baratheon, so in the books Rhaenys has black hair. Rhaenys is fierce and fearless, proud, smart, and capable. She's been a dragon rider since she was 13, riding Melis, the Red Queen. When Rhaenys married Corlys, she arrived at the wedding on dragonback. Corlys said, I came back from the ends of the earth for you. And Rainy said, we can go back to the ends of the earth together, but I'll get there first, as I'll be flying. Rainy's and Corlys have a deep love, and one of the more healthy relationships in the story. But Rainy's and Corlys also have ambition and resentment. Because Rainy's was the firstborn child of King Jaehaerys' firstborn son. So back in the day, many people saw Rainy's as the rightful heir to the throne. But male rulers are preferred over women, so King Jaehaerys repeatedly passed over Rhaenys to make his second son Balon, and then Balon's son Viserys the heir instead. So Rhaenys is called the Queen Who Never Was. She and Corlys feel that her birthright, and her children's birthright, was taken from her. And this injustice hasn't been forgotten. Corlys and Rhaenys have two children, Lena and Lenor Velaryon. Lena is fiery and adventurous like her parents, and she rides Vhagar, the biggest and oldest dragon alive. Lenor rides the splendid grey and white dragon, Sea Smoke. So those are the three important families in House of the Dragon. The Targaryens with King Viserys, his daughter Rhaenyra, and brother Daemon, the Hightowers with Otto and his daughter Alicent, 
and the Valarions, with Corlys, his wife Rhaenys, and their kids Lena and Lenor. But there are a few other important characters at court. Kristen Cole is not a prince or a lord from a great house, he's the son of a steward, but he is a talented fighter, and he's dangerously attractive, a favourite of all the ladies at court. Mazaria is a woman from a brothel in Lys. In the books, she's described as a very pale, older woman, sometimes called Misery, the White Worm. Mazaria is a lover and trusted confidant of Prince Daemon. In Hot D, she's described as a survivor, with street smarts and ambition. Lionel Strong is the Lord of Harrenhal, that giant, half-ruined castle in the Riverlands. Lionel serves on King Viserys' council as the Master of Laws. He's a big man with a reputation as a warrior, and some people assume that he's a dumb brute. But Lionel is very intelligent, having studied at the Citadel. He brings his sons Harwin Breakbones and Laris the Clubfoot to court. This guy is Grand Maester Melos. He advises the king as representative of the Citadel of the Maesters, like Grand Maester Pycelle did in Game of Thrones. Melos is described as a voice for peace, urging calm and compromise, and he's a trusted friend of King Viserys. Maesters are meant to be unbiased servants, working for the good of the realm. But some characters in the books don't trust the Maesters, Tyrion says the gods only know who they're conspiring with, or what they mix into their potions. Another character says they could be twisting the words of the letters that they write and read for their lords. In Book 5, this guy Marwyn claims that for centuries the maesters have secretly worked against the Targaryens to kill off all their dragons. There's no proof of any of this in the books, and Marwyn is kind of a crazy conspiracy theorist, but if we look closely, Hot D may have hints of the Maesters manipulating politics. Ultimately, it's the Maesters who write the history books, and in Fire and Blood, author George Martin plays with the idea of bias in historical sources. Because the main Game of Thrones books are novels, told from the point of view of the characters in the moment. But Fire and Blood is different. It's a fictional history book, written by an in-world historian called Archmaester Gildane. Gildane wrote Fire and Blood years after the events he's describing, so he relies on historical sources that are sometimes contradictory. Two of his main sources for the story of Hot D are a septon called Eustace and a dwarf jester called Mushroom. While Eustace's version of the story is very proper and straightforward, Mushroom's version is full of bloody murder and secret scandalous sex, and it's up to the reader to decide whose version of the story is true. A hot D can only show one version of events. It'll be the objective account of what really happened. But we can compare Hot D to the stories in Fire and Blood to see if Eustace was right, or if Mushroom's scandalous tales are true. One of the problems with the Game of Thrones show was that the book series it's based on isn't finished. Thrones ran out of books to adapt in season 5, and that's when the show started getting worse. The bad pussy. A finger in the bomb. Because I have bowls. But Danny kind of forgot it. I don't want it. And Bran the Broken. Fortunately, Hot D is different, because the book that it's based on, Fire and Blood, tells the full story of this conflict, from beginning to end. So this time, the writers know where they're going. And George Martin is much more involved in Hot D than he was in the last seasons of Thrones. Hot D is a fantasy, but it's not about black and white heroes and villains. Author George Martin loves grey characters, who have both good and evil inside them. Like, in Game of Thrones, the Starks are mostly heroic and the Lannisters are mostly villainous, but they're complicated, right? Hot D is even more morally ambiguous. Viewers will have different opinions about who the heroes and the villains are in this story. These are complex, conflicted characters who hurt each other in spectacularly messy ways. There'll be high drama, cheating, lies, revenge, dark, turbulent, bloody doings. 
and we'll cover it all with videos each week. So like and subscribe. We're going to do a live stream 